My name is Arno Peter. I'm joined by my co-conspirator Sascha Heberling. And um, yeah, we've been tinkering on different projects for many years by now. And uh, the main thing today we want to talk about is Tris.io, which is a new iteration of the RetroStore card that we discussed, introduced last year. And um, what I want to do is uh, first just quickly recap the story on how we ended up being here. And then uh, again, we will be daring enough to give a live demo of, of the new Tris.io card and show you how it works. <laughs> um, so I began working on a uh, TRS-80 emulator for Android already over a decade ago, I think. Um, did my first little steps. So it's basically just using XTRS, but then adding, adding an Android skin over it. So I cannot claim to have done an emulator. I just added an Android skin over it. It's still available in the App Store, um, only for Android. So if you have an Android phone, you can just open your, app st uh, your, your Play Store and just look for TRS-80, and you should uh, be able to find it. So that was the first iteration or the, the first project. And Sasha already um, did a lot of little things on, on that uh, application. So he added Chrome car support um, so you can project your Android screen to the big screen and uh, um, rendering. Yeah, some, some rendering improvements. So a lot of little things that he already began tinkering with. But then just about the time the first 10D assembly happened, um, we be had another idea, a uh, retro store. So the idea is to create um, a backend, a cloud service, that offers the same seamless uh, comfort on downloading these retro apps than you have for modern app stores, um, except that we are hosting these old uh, TRS-80 apps. And uh, we integrated into our Android emulator and basically had like a little client that allows you to, to browse the content and then, uh, um, then download these apps. We've been very careful on, on copyright issues, of course. Uh, everything that is hosted, we do have permission by the authors to, to do so. Um, and you can go to retrostore.org and you can see some more details about that. Well, then, uh, then Pete, um, two years ago, gave me the first challenge. He said, well, um, you know, wouldn't it be cool if you could also run, do this like on, on an actual machine? Because up to that point, we only had a client for the retro store on, uh, on, on, you know, inside our emulator. Um, so then, well, we took the challenge on and um, I began building a hardware and I used this uh, ESP32 controller that I also mentioned during yesterday's presentation, like a wonderful little, little microcontroller. And we ended up um, having uh, the first version of, of the RetroStore card. And um, that's basically what we had last year at uh, Tandy Assembly. And it's basically just it connects to the uh, um, expansion port. And then um, the, the thing is that this microcontroller here has a Wi-Fi module. So that is how this card can go online and connect to the RetroStore backend. And then we had um, a native client on the machine that was interacting or interfacing with this uh, card here. And then you could download, a browse, and download the, the old TRS-80 apps. Um, well, then Pete again came along, gave us another challenge, and said, well, you know, what we actually have done here is a general purpose uh, um, input-output card. I mean, since it go can go online, why not just um, then, then um, use that capability and, and uh, do more things than just simply accessing the retro store? And I said, well, okay. So then what I did, um, I, I did my first hardware patch. So on, on, the, on the back side of the PCB of the original card, I just added a few wires. So one thing that I wanted to do is to also integrate FRET capabilities into the card here. And um, when I looked at it, um, I realized what was missing is that I, I was, in, in the original design, I was not able to access the, uh, the address lines A0 through A3, because that is what I needed to, to then intercept the C0 through CF uh, interaction that is necessary for the, uh, for the hard disk. So I just added just the wires, just pulling basically more signals from the address bus to the microcontroller, and the rest is all done in software. So the new version of Tris.io, basically it's, um, it was designed by, um, um, or redesigned by Andrew Quinn from New Zealand, uh, but it has exactly the same components as the original RetroStore card. So it has the same microcontroller, it has the same uh, GAL, this um, programmable, uh, chip and, and level shifter, so it has the same components, just lay, laid out a little bit differently. Um, so here's the back side of, of the card, if you uh, 
wanted to take a close-up look on here. Well, and that's basically then now um, what I want to then, then just discuss from now on, like on the software side, the things that have changed since last year. So um, uh, first of all, the only difference were just to pull extra address lights to the microcontrollers to, that I can intercept these, this traffic. But then with that, um, we were able to do a bunch of new things. So uh, Pete Satinsky already contributed to what he calls Trisnik which basically is um, 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 Berkeley socket API. So from your TRS-80, you can open a TCP socket to an arbitrary web server or, or any server. It doesn't have to be a web server. <laughs> I'll have a demo on that later. Um, then then uh, what I did is I added an SMB client. So you know SMB is, uh, you, you, can, you can have SMB share. So if you have uh, your network storage in your home, um, um, you can export, you can put data there, you can, you can export it and uh, basically I integrated an uh, um, SMB client onto the microcontroller. So I was able to read and write files, open, read, write files. So then I, I called this thing TRISFS, I didn't have file system, I didn't have any better name for it. But basically it op allows you to do like the typical POSIX API, F open, F read, F close, and, and so forth, but then you are manipulating files that are residing on the SMB share somewhere in the network. So it's also done via um, the Wi-Fi module. Yeah, and, and the, the other thing is then it's, it's fully compatible to FRET, at, le at least uh, to the extent I can test it. And um, so the, the, the ROM patch uh, works that, that uh, Ian came up with and so, yeah, well. So the basic architecture looks something like this here. So you have your TRS-80 on, on the left, and then the TRIS I.O. card is connected via the 50-pin uh, um, um, expansion I.O. bus. And then, like I said, the microcontroller has Wi-Fi capabilities, so that is, allows it to connect to different servers on, on the internet. Um, and you can go to different routes. You can connect to any, any service on the internet if, you're caring to, if you care to, to write a client for it. Um, or you can use the SMB client to just mount an SMB share for it. So that's kind of the uh, general architecture. So the, the hard disk images that FRET uses to, to then, then mount a hard disk image, you know, the original FRET card has an SD slot um, where you put the disk images on the, on the SD card. Well, there is no SD card on this card here. So the question is, where do the disk images reside? Well, on the, on the SMB share. So let me just walk you then through um, the demo here. And uh, well, the first thing I want to show is, how did you move this over? To the right? Yeah, to the right. Okay. So here's my file browser. And um, <laughs> and so I'm on my Windows uh, machine here. And we have a Raspberry Pi sitting. And am I actually on the right network here? Okay, I'll do it. Okay. Yes. So you, you, you're looking at um, a file browser, and you can see that I am connected to the Raspberry Pi to the SMB share that is residing on the Raspberry Pi. And you can probably recognize some of the files that uh, is part of, of, of FRET here. So the, the various um, hard disk images, new DOS 3D and, and LDOS 3, LSDOS, and also the FRET dot ROM, that's the first boot loader that gets booted up when, when, you, when you activate ROM. So all of this sits on the Raspberry Pi here, and I'm just using my Windows laptop to just connect to it and, 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 uh, and browse it. When you first turn on Tris IO, then what happens is you have this uh, blinking LED, which basically says it's in setup mode, because the very first thing that you have to do is to connect Tris IO to a network, to a, to a Wi-Fi router. So what happens in this case is that uh, the, um, the microcontroller is creating a hotspot. So it creates its own little access point uh, with the SSID uh, uh, Tris IO. So then I'm going back to my laptop, and I think now it's actually easier for me to switch the, the screens here. So I um, open a browser and I, I look at the networks here. 
And you can see there's the Tris IO network that is created by the hotspot on the Tris IO card. So I now connect to it. <coughs> and then um, I can go into my browser and I have a local um, domain name, trisio.local. And what hopefully happens now? Yeah, it's not online, right? Because it's. Um, Yeah, so then on the Tris.io card is a little web server. And I'm now using my browser on my, on my laptop to connect to this web server. So that's the web page that's being served by, uh, by, by the little web server. And uh, Sasha did a wonderful job on designing this <laughs> page here. You can see um, there are two icons here, Wi-Fi and SMB. Right now it's not connected, it's not online, it, and SMB is also not connected. So now I have to provide the credentials. So um, RetroStore is the SSI. So, so the, um, the Raspberry Pi also has its own uh, um, hotspot. So I'm, that's what I'm telling Tris.io now to connect to. So this would be your home router. So what if you do it at home? And I've forgotten again the password. <laughs> Then you can uh, give it a time zone. So here is the time zone where I live in California, and uh, it also encodes the daylight savings times. So also Tris.io doesn't have a little uh, battery. Um, so where does it get the time from? Well, since it can go online, it can use NTP to get the current time. But you have to tell it the time zone that you are. And I didn't figure out the time zone Actually, here. If you replace the eight with the five, it should be fine. No, that's OK. And then the last year, you have to then uh, tell the, the SMB share. So you have to give the, the URL. So here's then, um, that is the um, 169.1.10 slash tris80. That is the um, SMB share ex as exported by the, uh, by the Raspberry Pi. Uh, tris IO user, and then and the... Let me see if I got this right. Now I click Submit. So then what happens is uh, I upload this information to Tris.io and Tris.io now configures itself. So it, um, the LED at some point should stop flashing and um, if it manages to connect. Takes a little while. And then it should Go in green. Yeah, so green indicates that it was able to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Um, there is a there is a button here where you can um, um, when you click on it, it um, will flash the LED twice. First time for the Wi-Fi starter, second time for the SMB starter. So it flashed green twice, which means now this is finished with the setup. So I connected this one to the the router, and SMB is also connected. And um, yeah, so the web interface, now the, the web server still runs on the microcontroller, so you can now see that uh, the Wi-Fi and the SMB are green icons, so it actually sex, um, managed to, you can actually change this now again if you wanted to. Um, so that is, now we can, uh, I think, switch over to the machine, so now we can use your fancy, uh, sure. fancy. let me, uh, I guess I have to uh, extend it. Yeah, because it's on the other screen, right? Oh, oops. Ah, ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we have a little webcam here. Where did it go? Oh, here. Yeah. So I'm going to show the screen on, on the Model 4. Uh, thanks to Jay for giving us the, uh, <laughs> the demo machine here. We did not schlep that from California. That would have been <laughs> <laughs> so um, this machine is a Model 4. It does not have the FRET ROM patch, so, which means I have to go through some, one extra hoop on, on doing the booting. So I have um, a floppy disk here with L LDOS 531. So when I first turn on the machine, it's going to then uh, boot into LDOS. Uh, 
And then what we did is we wrote a little basic program that basically is doing exactly what uh, the ROM patch is doing. You can type list. So you can see, you know, I, I don't know if you can read this, um, it um, activates the um, um, I.O. port and then it does the same thing as a ROM patch does. So write out the model number and, then, and it, it peaks, uh, it reads 256 bytes, pokes them at a certain address and then it jumps to this location. So when I do that, now it um, loads the bootloader. So what happened now is that, um, so at first it, it uh, booted up or it, it downloaded the, the FRED ROM and the FRED ROM then, as you probably know, is then scanning the SD card and it looks for available uh, hard disk images. So the same thing happens here, except that I'm scanning the remote um, um, SMB share. So these uh, images that you see here are actually um, then on the SD card of, of, the, of the Raspberry Pi. And um, one thing that someone hopefully can explain to me, but the only thing I can run is LSDOS. <coughs> So, but uh, let me select um, um, LSDOS. So now this booting, this now happens over the network. So this is now using the disk image that is stored on the Raspberry Pi. So I can then type there. And that's basically then, then the same disk images that also Ian ships with this fret card. Now, okay, let me click break here. Um, so import export, you know, when you want to exchange um, between inside the TRS-80 and, and the hosted file system. So that also works, except that import export now read from, uh, from, the, from the SMB share. So um, um, we have, um, Pete did a little demo for who is, like to show the, the Trisnik capability. That's a little basic program that is on the SD card. So what I can do now, I can say import to, who is dot basic. So that is now reading the who is dot basic file on the SMB share and is importing it into um, LS DOS here. So now I can uh, load basic. I can load um, the, oops. Is slash bus. I can type in list. So that is code that, that Pete wrote basically, and, and I'll no, okay, <laughs> let me just run it. So it, it is using now the Tris Nick capability, and you can see maybe just a few things here um, with the out 31. Remember, I did the whole 31 thing yesterday, that's the Tris IO port. Um, so here you can just send commands over to, uh, to Trisio and you can access uh, um, different uh, modules. And um, um, I'll have a slide on this later. So I just want to show the demo here. So if I run this, it's basically a basic program that uses the Berkeley socket API to connect to the Whois server. So I can now type in a domain name, for example, google.com. And then it just does... A Oops. Okay. Don't know why that is happening. Uh, yeah. So now, okay. Now, <laughs> don't know what happened the first time. So here is now basically it's uh, in basic uh, reading out from the TCP socket the who is entry of the domain name google.com. So then I can jump back into, and, and the same kind of thing you can also now do with file system access. So you can also write a basic program that uses the in out commands to access files on the, on the SMB share. Let me go back to um, LSDOS and then for the last part of the demo here, our RetroStore client. That is the thing that we de demoed last year. So there's nothing new. I imported the, the CMD file same way, just had it on the S SMB share and just said import. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Didn't work. I don't know why. Let me go back to my laptop here. So it's so it's all I/O commands. Yes. Yes. The actual like Berkeley 
the sockets is on the is it on the uh, on, on, on the yes on the on the ESP yes yeah so, so got a couple more slides does it handle SSL um, not right now but it could SSL is a little bit tricky um, well everything's an ONG SSL so. yeah yeah no no it, it, it can it can but uh, so so the okay let me turn on the slides here so, so the protocol is, I mean, Tris.io is just like an umbrella for different different modules. And right now there are uh, uh, four different modules. There is the, the Tris.io core part that is used for configuring Tris.io itself, like the, the SSID and password. Um, then um, there's Trisnik from, from uh, Pete. There's the old retro store thing from last year that is now module three. And then there's the uh, Trisfs, the file system access. That is, um, and FRET is something else. You know, FRET is like the hardest emulation. It's not technically a module. Um, so the protocol is always like this, that you send the first byte um, the module ID, and then an, another byte for the argument, uh, for, for the command and the arguments, and then you wait for the interrupt line to be asserted that Trisio tells you it's done now, and then you start reading from port 31 to then, then re uh, receive the, the data. And, um, actually, let me just flip to this one here. So this is basically um, what it would look like to open a file from within BASIC. So you enable the um, I.O. port, then, oh, I forgot the line number here. <laughs> okay, so this should be on the new line here. So you write thir uh, 4 to 31, then you write, uh, that it accesses the TRISFS uh, module, and you write 1, that is the command for open file. Um, then here you enter a file as a string and then you just in a for loop you just write out um, character for character the file name you write out um, um, the, um, the the ending uh, zero um, null terminated then you write out the mode like this one is for reading you can also read write and, and uh, random access and then here you wait for the interrupt line to tell that as uh, um, that Tresio tells you that it's done and then um, you read a status byte that will tell you if, if it was op uh, like if open succeeded or not, and if it's okay, then you read one more and you get a file descriptor. You can also then open multiple files. And uh, so uh, this is like part of a little demo that I have on my GitHub repository to implement cat. So you can basically from within basic um, look at a file that it resides on the SMB share. Um, yeah, I skipped one slide here for FRET. Yeah, so, so it is fully compatible with FRET. Um, the two biggest changes, I suppose, are that uh, it doesn't have an SD card anymore, so it only draws as disk images from an SMB share. Uh, it doesn't need a battery because it can sync the time from the internet. And yeah, um, import export and all the I.O. happens and on the SMB share. Uh, the protocol, let me just skip over this here. Last slide, well, quick summary. Um, yeah, so it gives the Model 3 and Model 4, apparently two, since it works here. <laughs> Thanks to George for some quick hacking yesterday. <laughs> um, it, it is fully backward compatible with the uh, old RetroStore card, um, although the protocol has changed. You know, the RetroStore card last year, um, the only function it had was to access uh, the RetroStore backend. So we broke it up at a discussion with Pete on making it more like a module system that you first send a module ID and then the command over so that it's easy, extensible with new modules when you have new ideas. Um, yeah, it's, um, if you want to get one URL, it's probably this one here, which is to the GitHub repository. So everything is there, the complete source code, schematics, uh, Gerber files, um, uh, everything that, that you need to, to build it yourself. And yeah, a lot of credits. Um, of course, you know, there's a lot of work that went into it that before I even started, and, and Fred Verkoven, Mav, um, building Fred. Um, Andrew Quinn, he helped with the uh, design or the, the, of the new PCB. Uh, Pete, yeah, for <laughs> pushing me and <laughs> doing new things. And then Trisnik, of course. And yeah, George for slapped you on there from yesterday's <laughs> hacking session here. So that's what we've got.
No. No. Yes? I think you mentioned in OTA the thoughts of uh, having the system work in auto update. Oh, oh yes, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Um, so the um, it does um, support OTA, um, and if you have one of those cards, and when you turn it on, and the LED turns blue, it means that I put up a new firmware on 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 the back end, and it will automatically download and, and update itself. Uh, what if you don't want it to update? <laughs> don't turn it on. Um, <laughs> You um, well, then I would give have to give you a custom firmware. Actually, the ESP, you know, there's like this menu config where you can configure the ESP parameters, and I also created a section for Tris IO, so you can disable um, as a compile time option. You can disable OTA, you know, but then you would have to then install the SDK and do it yourself. Uh, the one that is on on the on the firmware right now doesn't OTA automatically. Other questions? Is the, is the time integral to any function, or is that just the time? It's having a real time clock. Um, well, and, and uh, this goes back to, um, I don't know exactly where this came in from, but I know the operating system, there are some patches to read the time from some external port. And I don't know if that's from XTRS or if that was part of Fred, I don't know. But um, since uh, Fred Verkoven gave me his source code and gave him permission to integrate it into Tris.io, it just does the same behavior. I think the idea is that um, when, you, when you boot from here, that it automatically, the, the, the machine, the TRS-80, gets the time, the correct date and time. So on my Model 3, when I, when I use it, it shows the precise time then, and, and it uses that um, so there's a little protocol from the TRS-80 to, to via fret um, that, that uh, it just pulls the time. Except that, again, I don't need to set the time manually, it just gets synced uh, via NTP. Yeah? Can you uh, configure the SFB and the Wi-Fi from the TRS-80 um, the, the, the Wi-Fi, yes. Uh, the SMB, not yet. One thing I want to do is like a utility that... Uh, so, so this configuring the Wi-Fi is part of the register <coughs> client. And I should remove it. You know, I should have like a dedicated Tris IO configuration tool that will also then allow you to configure the SMB share. Yeah. It's it's possible, of course. And uh, for Wi-Fi, I already support it, but not yet for SMB. But it is just a little exercise. You know. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, outlook. I don't know, Pete. What, what's next? <laughs> what is your next challenge? <laughs> next challenge. What's the next challenge? Okay. What version of the SMB does it support? Uh, three, the latest. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for your attention. <laughs>